Hello everyone, it is Dr. C. What I want to do in this video is look at limiting reagent from a little bit different perspective. I have other videos posted that kind of go through limiting reagent problems in detail. I have another video that posts one example problem in detail. But sometimes it helps to look at things from a different perspective. So let's look at this limiting reagent analogy, something you would be familiar with, making sandwiches. Okay, So let's read through this problem together. You have volunteered to make sandwiches for the local homeless shelter. You get home from a long day at school and find that you have three loaves of bread, and there are 15 slices per each loaf, five packs of turkey, 12 slices in each, and one pack of cheese that has 24 slices. You are asked to make each sandwich with three pieces of turkey, one slice of cheese, and two slices of bread. Okay, so let me get a pen here. So here's a picture to help guide us. Two slices of bread, three... Um, slices of turkey, one slice of cheese. So this is really a limiting reagent problem, right? Most likely one of our ingredients is going to run out first. Unless somehow the, you know, the manufacturer of the loaf of bread got to get, together with the deli, got together with you know, the maker of the cheese, and they made sure that the packages all worked out right. Not likely, right? So this is really a limiting reagent problem. Here are our reactants. And here is our product, the sandwich. One of our ingredients, one of our reactants is going to run out first. We need to find out which one. Now, this is something you're familiar with. You could probably look at the numbers and figure this out. But let's set it up like we would do a limiting reagent calculation. Okay, let's do a calculation here. And the way, if you look at my prior videos, I like to treat each reactant separately. So we're going to take the bread and based on the number of slices of bread, how many sandwiches could we make? And then let's look at the turkey. Based on the slices of turkey, how many sandwiches could we make? And then let's look at the cheese. Based on the slice of cheese, how many sandwiches can we make? Okay, whichever one limits how much product we can get, that's our limiting reagent. All right, so let's start with the bread. So we have three loaves of bread, 15 slices each, 45 slices. Now we know we need an even number of slices. Okay? So we're going to start with 44 slices of bread. And we know for each sandwich we need two slices of bread. Okay, what is that 1 to 2 ratio kind of equivalent to? Yeah, our mole ratio in a stoichiometry problem. There's our ratio between product, the sandwich, and our reactant. Slices of bread cancel, and we get 22 sandwiches. That's pretty cool. Okay, so there's our, in effect, if you want to try to compare that to a normal limiting reagent problem, how we go from moles to moles. Okay, now let's go to the turkey. We have five packs of turkey with 12 slices each. 5 times 12, we have 60 slices of turkey. Okay, how many slices per sandwich? Three slices. One sandwich. Three slices of turkey. And that will give us 20 sandwiches. There you go. All right, last ingredient, cheese. We have one pack of cheese, it's up here at the top, with 24 slices. Okay, this one is obviously very easy since we need one slice of cheese per sandwich, but let's write out our one to one ratio, equivalent to a one to one mole ratio, one sandwich. For each sandwich, we need one slice of cheese. All right, so slices of cheese cancel. So what you should see here, this is like a limiting reagent problem with three reactants. We treat each reactant separately and find which one limits how much product we can get. The correct number of sandwiches we can make are 20. 
and Turkey would then be our limiting reagent. Okay, Turkey would be limiting. So, how many, so looking at the questions, probably should have read through these first. How many sandwiches can we make? Got that, 20 sandwiches. Which ingredient limits the number of complete sandwiches that we can make? The limiting reagent, that's the turkey. Part C, which ingredients are in excess? Well, the other two in this case, since we have three reactants. Bread is in excess, and so is the cheese. Last part of the problem, how much of each excess ingredient remains after we've made the maximum amount of sandwiches. After we've made these 20 sandwiches, how much bread is left over, how much cheese is left over, okay? So what we're gonna do in this case is we're gonna work backwards from the correct amount of sandwiches. Probably the easiest way to solve these. We've solved excess reactant differently in other problems. In this case, we know we made 20 sandwiches. And we know we need two slices of bread for each sandwich. Okay, and you could do this in your head. And we need 40 slices of bread. That's how much we need to make those 20 sandwiches. How many slices of bread did we start with? Probably remember. It wasn't 44. Remember, I went to 44 because I knew I needed an even number but we had three loaves at 15 slices each. So we started with 45, we reacted 40 slices. Okay, bad analogy. We used 40 slices to make those sandwiches. So we had 45 slices of bread to start, 40 reacted. Okay, I better stop. We have five slices of bread remaining in excess, however you wanna say it. All right. So there's excess bread, five slices left over. We can do the same thing for the cheese. Again, this is somewhat redundant. You can do this in your head, but let's write it out as we would write a mole ratio. We need one slice of cheese to make one sandwich. And so we're going to need 20 slices of cheese to make those 20 sandwiches. Okay, makes sense, right? How many slices of cheese did we start with? I have it here on part three, but we can scroll up to the top if we want. We started with 24 slices of cheese. 20 reacted, 20 were used to make the sandwiches. Four slices of cheese in excess. Oh, I'm sorry, that's a C. Okay, excess, or four slices of cheese remain. All right, I kind of like analogies at times. Um, sometimes if it's a good analogy, they can really help you make connections in problems. I think this is a pretty good one. We're familiar with making sandwiches and this comparison between ingredients as reactants and the product that we want to make and realizing that one of our ingredients is going to run out and limit how many sandwiches we can make. And therefore, the other two ingredients in this case will have left over. And we can figure out how much excess of each one we have. All right, I hope this helps. Um, lots of limiting reagent videos posted. Please let me know if you have any questions. Have a great day. Take care.